So this section of the exhibition uh, is, shows a number of things. It's really um, designed to really continue this theme of how forms and shapes are kind of contiguous throughout. But it's several different bodies of work. So this body of sculptures he referred to as force. You can kind of see with the, the lattice structure, the up and down <coughs> vertical structure and kind of a really diverse array of materials. Um, there's sort of like leather, tin, uh, copper, uh, wood, and, uh, and again, uh, you see lots of these different motifs and shapes. So they're leaf forms. They're also uh, sort of in here, they're sort of derived from fruit and seed. Way in the back, that black piece you can see um, where we were talking earlier about how he would take these circular and cur curvilinear shapes like paisley shapes and layer them on top of one another and then kind of look at what was in the voids. And this is exactly what this black piece is, which I think is wood, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It, it looks like a real thick piece of metal, but it's actually wood and painted to look very metallic. But again, it's just this recurring theme in, in th this piece here of how it persisted for 20 or so years. And, and some of these things you know, continue to show up later in things as we talked about in the drawings, on the AIDS drawings in the 80s and 90s and other things. And this was a, a group of sculptures that we think it might have been shown, but there doesn't seem to be documentation of a full show. He clearly had press pictures. Oh, he did, he did show them. Yeah. So at Holly Solomon? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because it just didn't seem like there was actually a catalog. We didn't see a catalog for that, but um, maybe they didn't make one. I don't think, I don't think they were. They, it seemed, there seemed that there's catalogs where she would do a catalog for the whole year, and they would just pick one page for each artist. But um, yeah, I did see a card for this show. So oh, okay, um, I didn't see the card. Okay, um, and I've I've seen slides. So this piece, I don't I don't know that this one was in the show. I think this is a precursor to it. So that's kind of what we're showing now. We're going to show some of the other formal sculptures later. But in this area, what we wanted to do was look at the diversity of his his work, and then present you know these wigs, which in his studio he had hundreds of wigs. Mm -hmm. And they, they were all over the walls, almost also on these kind of shelves, almost like, a, like lattice structures. And he would have them named and there would be um, pinned on them, names for them, uh, some little notes sometimes for how he would wear them. But one of the things as I was looking at them, and, and there, there are so many, we're going we're gonna to show some of those later as before, is you see you know, these, 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 these kind of 50s uh, um, bobs and things like that. You see these little curls and these little spirals that you also see in his in his shapes from his sculptures that that's something you can see in the black form in this one behind you see it in this piece and to talk about the way that he approached sculpture you know when i first kind of looked at some of these i thought they looked a little bit rough and i think you have to think of the historic context you know when he was working in the the 60s um uh you know, this is a whole nother practice and then in this period, you know, you have to think, uh, he was shown at Fischbach Gallery in, you know, in, a, in about a time period, you know, contingent with the uh, eccentric abstraction show. And so you have to think about how artists were working with materials, how they were um, moving away from, from you know, more um, kind of polished uh, approaches in sculpture. But then this one is kind of the opposite. Then he started uh, showing at the commercial gallery, Holly Solomon, and you know, from what I've heard from primary sources is that she wanted him to clean it up a little bit. Um, you know, she, she liked the pieces, but it was hard. Maybe a little more refined. Yeah, it was, it was, it's, um, it's harder to sell, you know, it's, you know, and so he, he did these sculptures, which um, you know, we're looking at from one angle, but the sculpture completely moves and shifts and opens, and as you take the pieces apart, they flatten in the way of his drawings. They're just incredibly um, fabulous as works of sculpture. And I think the problem with the internet age is we're so used to seeing things on a flat screen. Mm -hmm. And he's really working as a sculptor. And these pieces operate incredibly well in three dimensions. It's the way that a sculpture really is. Because these um, really are, as Isaac said, they're, they're flat elements. And they're assembled together and just with notches. Mm -hmm. So they're not welded and bolted or anything together, they just assemble and, and interlink and interconnect, which we think is also very meaningful. Um, the other thing too is, um, you know, just 
well, particularly about these. This was an interesting progression because this gets back into something we talked about earlier with his interest in, in illusory effects. Mm -hmm. And in these, this one doesn't show it as profoundly as some of the larger ones that have multiple pieces that come up and sort of, uh, you know, or shadow each other and what have you and create more and more negative spaces. But what's interesting about this whole series is there are shiny aluminum and shiny brass and wood. And also there's sort of the matte side of the aluminum. So there's a reflective and a shiny side in all of these. And what's interesting is how they, this internal mirroring, and because of the reflective surfaces and the way the surfaces interact and reflecting each other, it makes the piece seem more heroic than it is. Some, some of these elements, there's very few elements, but they seem so big and complex when they're assembled. But when you break it down, it's so simple. But the interesting thing is that internal reflections, and we think that's actually very meaningful for Ed because of his whole, this was in the mid, no, this was in the mid 80s. And uh, I think this is, this is early, I would say this is before. Well, some of them were, but some of these were actually yeah. I thought, in 85, wasn't it? I think this was 75, I would say, 75 to 78. Okay, so the, in, the mirroring though seems to sort of reflect sort of that this internal tension that he's always had between sort of this being in the gay world and you know operating in a straight world or between the gay world and you know being um, you know um, transgender. And so you see a lot of these tensions, internal tensions in all of his sculptures. Uh, but again though these shapes are so recurring and thematic um, and these internal reflections and, and sort of this complexity that he gets out of just very simple reductive forms and it's this dialogue. But the other thing too was, I forgot to mention here, is all these tendrils and vining that again is, you know, it comes back to all these uh, biological uh, materials and his interest in things that, that uh, uh, trellis and, and, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, vine and sort of work their way out of a construct or out of some sort of entrapment or whatever or off of a trellis and so sometimes you kind of wonder if he's kind of portraying this sort of uh, liberation you know with these you, you know sort of tenderling or binding off of these things that he also sees as sort of a barrier or a restriction or some sort of a, a, a structure and uh, so you know, I don't want to overinterpret too much but it's just sort of interesting well, that everything what? is full of these double meanings. You know, um, th there, there's always an aspect where you're, you're making your own interpretation, but then when you look at the breadth of someone's body of work, you really see things. I'm looking this way, I can see a sculpture that relates to this, and one of the specific things that we were talking about, the reflective qualities, part of it's silver and then part of it's gold, and the silver part then is reflecting the gold, so as you're looking at it, it appears gold, so that the binary is back and forth. There's also this paisley form that's also kind of like mm -hmm. a yin-yang that has like a Taoist aspect of the, the binary relations between, you know, male, female, you know, the um, different aspects of gender and um, in incredibly simple forms. And then when you collapse them, the shapes, it's, it's the same as that sculpture. It's the same thing we're seeing in the drawings, it's the same there. And then because they're all derivative from organic shapes, we see it also in the way that hair mm. is, the way that botanicals are. And we just wanted to take this moment to look at some of these different aspects of sculpture, mm -hmm. even if they are something as diverse as hair, and say, look at these similarities that, you know, that we can observe. And, and if you see a larger range, you see even it, it's consistent. Oh, yeah. It's, and the, the wigs are interesting because I don't think people ever thought so much about him thinking of them as sculpture, but the fact that he titled them. Um, I think is very telling, and they're in quotes, so it's really clear, you know, that these are titled, these things. And um, the other thing, too, when you mentioned about, you know, we've always sort of marveled over this sort of yin and yang and, and this uh, binaries all the time. Even in the drawings, um, we were just looking at the candles, and I can stand and see that one candle. They're always in pairs or groupings, and there's always, like, light and dark. Mm -hmm. And so there's, it's this tenebrae you know, of, of uh, dark, uh, light to dark, this transition. And, uh, you know, which is a religious service uh, in, during Easter in Christianity. But um, I think, again, it's just this whole thing where there's always a tension. There's this day to night, night to day, and, you know, uh, light to dark, and, and all of these things. And you always, that's the other thing too that has really struck me is this, um, he always 
He doesn't create it, but he captures these internal tensions or these, you know, these sort of binaries. And again, that's just another thing that's very uh, pervasive uh, in his work. So I think, yeah, the sculptures are very telling. And, and this is a snapshot of what, almost 50 year span, 40 year span of sculpture. Yeah. So um, you can see he was consistent 